Hello everyone, welcome to another video with Archive Education. The topic of today's discussion is going to be constraint diagrams, specifically for aircraft design. What we're going to cover is what they are, why do we use them, and how do we get constraint diagrams. Okay, so first we're going to cover the what. As the name suggests, constraint diagrams are diagrams or plots or graphs that are going to use different equations and they're going to make an area where a certain characteristic or more than one are going to be acceptable in any design. As I said, in this case, we're going to use aircraft design. And beyond the constraints, the design characteristics are going to be unacceptable. We're going to see and understand more in the context of today's video. Okay, so now we get to the why. The following reasons are partly why we use a constraint diagram instead of formulas and equations in design. First of all, when we don't want a specific value for our design, we're going to use a constraint diagram. And why don't we want a specific value? Well, it's because in most of design cases, we want to find the most optimum characteristic instead of one single criteria. Also, in design, cost is a factor. And we need to see at what range are we going to minimize our cost. So that's another reason why we use constraint diagrams. And last but not least, when there are multiple design requirements, like in this case where we're going to compare wing loading and thrust to weight ratio, then we're going to need a constraint diagram to see at what range of thrust to weight ratio are we going to get the most optimum wing loading. Okay, now we get to the how. The how is sometimes a bit complicated. What we're going to do is we're going to make one desired characteristic a function of the other one. Then we're going to find different equations that link the two. Then we're going to plot all the equations on the same graph. Afterwards, when we get our graph, we're going to analyze which areas are desirable and then we're going to find the most appropriate characteristic by considering both design requirements and all the, all the other ones, for example, cost. Okay, now we're going to cover an example so it's more clear. As I said, in this case, we're going to compare thrust weight ratio to wing loading. Now, here I have a bunch of formulas that I'm going to plot. First of all, I should say that these uh, formulas were mostly obtained from a book called Roscam. Uh, it's about aircraft design and uh, each chapter is about uh, designing the certain part of an aircraft. I can put a link to it in the description if you want. So my first form formula is going to be thrust to weight ratio as a function of wing loading in the takeoff segment. The second equation is thrust to weight ratio in the cruise segment, which is not a function of wing loading. Third formula is going to be wing loading in landing, which is not going to affect thrust to weight ratio. Last but not least, there's going to be thrust to weight ratio in climb, which is going to be a function of lift to drag and another parameter called CGR or climb gradient. Another equation that I'm going to need is CD as a function of CL. Okay, so now I'm going to put the equations next to what I'm going to plot on Desmos. As you can see, the first equation is going to be my equation for takeoff. Y is going to be thrust to weight ratio and uh, X is going to be wing loading. Second equation is going to be concerning landing. Third one is going to be cruise and fourth one is going to be about climb. The fifth one is a point that I'm going to show you where our optimum design characteristic is going to be. Okay, now that I have my equations ready, I'm going to plot these on Desmos and obtain the following graph. As you can see, the blue line is going to demonstrate my takeoff requirement. The green line is going to demonstrate my landing requirement. Orange is going to be representing cruise, and the black line is going to be my requirement for climb. 
applying these, I'm going to obtain the point of intersection between the green line and blue line just underneath the red dot. That is going to be my minimum requirement, which means that my thrust to weight ratio and wing loading point has to be above and to the left of our intersection point. Anything to the right and our wing is going to be too small and anything underneath the intersection point means my engine is not going to have enough thrust to clear the runway. I should also mention that the reason why we don't choose a higher point on the graph is because it's true that we're going to have a higher thrust to weight ratio but that in turn is going to increase our power rating which means we are going to have to pay more for the engine. And this brings us to the most optimum point which is going to be 37.25 pound per feet squared for wing loading and 0.22 for thrust weight ratio which is a dimensionless quantity. Okay guys, this brings us to the end of this video. If you found it helpful, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and subscribe.